We're still going to work on uh, linear ODEs of higher order, but the word non-homogeneous is in front. So this is the homogeneous definition, not the one where it's kind of like all powers, all variables are raised to the same power, but this is homogeneous in the sense of uh, equal to zero. So when we say non-homogeneous, we're going to have that linear uh, higher order ODE, so which I'll write right now. going down to a one y prime plus a zero. If this was homogeneous, this would equal zero. It's not homogeneous. So we're going to get a function over here. So non-homogeneous. <coughs> means q of x not zero. So the first thing you're going to do is solve for yc. And yc is the solution. It's the homogeneous solution. And we do that the same way we did before. We set y equal e to the mx, plug it in, and then you got your polynomial, factor that out, and write down all your m values. And we went through a whole couple days on what to do when you got repeated va real values or complex and conjugates and all that good stuff. So you know how to uh, find your yc. So now we're going to focus on when it's non-homogeneous. So this is uh, case one. So we're, we're examining the Q of X. And case one is no term in QX is the same as a term in YC. Or the same as a term in YC. So if this is the case, then YP, so I should write down what YP means. YP is the non homogeneous solution. So in this case, yp is a linear combination of, of all the terms in qx and all of their derivatives. So we're going to do an example for case one, but I want to leave some room for case two. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to leave about that much room for case two. A little more room than I left for case one. So I'm going to reserve all that space there. I'm not going to do that trick where I spread the, know, magically the spread all the writing apart. <laughs> You'd need like a pair of scissors and some glue or something <laughs> to do that properly. And hope that you haven't written anything on the back page. Yeah, it's not a good idea. All right, so our example is 
y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y equals 4x squared plus 6e to the x. Is this the example case one? Yeah. So we don't really know it's case one yet. We will know it in a few minutes, but we don't really know yc yet, so I have no idea if there's a term in yc that will be the same as one of the ones in qx. So I want you to find yc right now. And I'll give you three minutes to get the yc. And the same first step, let y equal e to the mx. So I'll give you a two minute head start, and then I'll try to pass you at the end if you're going slow. I don't know off the top of my head if we're going to get real or complex. I think there should be two real roots. Maybe repeated, maybe not. You're doing the exact same thing we did the last uh, in, cha in chapter 20. Yeah. Now, last the very last problem we did had complex roots. This one may or may not have complex roots. It probably has real ones. So here's my characteristic equation. So <coughs> I took case one off the screen really quick. Actually, it's even before that. We're doing this step right there. So we're pretending it's homogeneous, and we're solving the <coughs> homogeneous right now. So forget about the QX. We're just solving the homogeneous like we were doing uh, in last section. So don't worry about QX right now. You're just setting that polynomial to go to zero and finding the roots. knows how to put the repeated root into yc properly because this is not linear independence right here so that's not the way to construct it how do we do a repeated root you had to throw an extra x after the v2 yep so we basically get a power of x in front of the second uh, occurrence so we got v2 x e to the negative 2x if this repeated three times, I would have, don't write this down, but I would have b3x squared e negative 2x. That would be if it repeated three times. So this should be in your notes. Well, it definitely should be in your notes, but it should also be on your cheat sheet. All right. <coughs> what to do when you have repeated roots? What there was three cases last section. They should all be in your notes. Yeah, yeah. And they should be on your cheat sheet soon. Yes. All right, so we're done on homogeneous. Now we're going to go to looking at uh, derivatives of Q. So our Q is <coughs> 4x squared plus 6e to the x. 
So I'm going to go back to case one and read that quickly. So we're in case one if no term in Q of X is the same as the term in our, uh, what do we call YC, our homogeneous solution. So let's take all possible derivatives of Q of X. So I'm going to get a, obviously I have an X squared. I'm going to have an X and a constant. Those are all the derivatives of the first term in there. So I'll just start taking derivatives. Q prime is 8X plus 6E to the X. Q <coughs> double prime is 8 plus 6E to the X. And Q triple prime. So at this point, there's no reason to take a fourth derivative because I'm not going to see a new term show up. So what I'm going to do now Where is... Where did you get e to the x? That's the derivative. That came from the qx. So the qx is written top of the board, and I just took derivatives. Yeah, but I mean, if you took a fourth derivative, you would still get e to the x. Right, but I'm not getting new terms is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. So I need to write down, I did, I mean, these are all linearly independent. So I have a constant, I have a linear term, and I have a quadratic term. I also have an e to the 1x term. So there's four terms total, four independent terms right here. So I circled three of them. Here's the fourth one right there. You don't need to circle the other. <coughs> these three are all repeats, so I'm not going to, you don't want to reuse them. So those are all repeats. I probably shouldn't be drawing in such a bold marker. So I'll go, we're taking those three and that guy. And these right here are all repeats. So YP is a linear combo of derivatives of, of, how do I say that? Linear combo of the terms in Q and their derivatives. That's a lot to write. Combo of independent terms. I've already used B1 and B2, <coughs> so I'm starting with B3. So I don't want to reuse B1 and 2. They already have a purpose. I'll go increasing. No, let's, let's write it as a polynomial decreasing powers of x. So we'll go B3x squared plus B4x plus B5 times 1 plus B6 e to the x. Now you might be wondering, well, well, we had a 4x squared. Why did I just write x squared? I could absolutely write 4x squared. But when you look at that constant right there, why don't we just call that guy b3? So that's all I'm doing. I'm basically ignoring the constant multiple coefficient because we get an arbitrary constant in front. So I'm not <coughs> writing b3 times 4. I'll just call it b3. So that's why I ignored the constant multiple in front of each of these terms. I did the same thing for all the rest of the terms. I don't really need to write times 1. That's going to look weird. So I just write b5 right there. I think there was an 8 technically. But again, I don't need 8 times a constant. I'll just grab the constant right there. OK, so any questions about these four terms, where they came from? Alright, so we have now six constants. That's too many constants. We should have two constants until we get initial conditions. We, we have four extra constants. So the four constants we just got, we have to figure them out. How can we figure out these constants? <coughs> I have a quick question. Yep. Have we already figured out that it's case one? Like when did we... Yep. 
I talked about it, I didn't write it down. So our, the reason I found YC first, so here's our two terms here. Well, I really should circle the X times that term. Uh, so these are already independent because that X over there <coughs> makes them linearly independent. Now we look at the terms I circled in yellow here. I don't, I do see E to the X, but it's not, it's E to a different multiple of X. So you're, okay, so you're just checking that none of those are the same. If I saw E to the negative two X, I would uh, not be in case one anymore. Uh, and, all, and all the polynomial terms are not at all appearing in our uh, combination. So that everything here is independent basically. Uh, we'll do something when they're not independent, spoiler alert, we basically multiply by an X. So it's not, things happen in a kind of <coughs> nice pattern. So <coughs> what are some ideas? How in the world are we going to figure out what B3, 4, 5, and 6 are? So what can I do with YP and my original differential equation? If it's a solution, <coughs> I can plug it in. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in YP. So I need to find YP prime and YP double prime. And then plug it in. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So we're going to take two derivatives. I need yp prime and yp double prime and we're going to plug it in. So now when we do our derivatives, like so like b3x squared would become 2b3x. Yep. So can I keep that as just b3 or do we need those two times? You'll need those. <coughs> so <coughs> when we go forward you'll need to keep your constants now. Uh, you didn't need to do it the last step because whether that's B3 or 4B3, as long as you're consistent, it's fine. But going forward, I can't just say B3 is equal. Like, if I write B3 equals 2B3, that's what I would basically be saying. Uh, that means B3 equals 0. Because if you, uh, if I subtract B3, I got 0 equals uh, 2b3 minus 1b3, so b3 would be 0, which is probably not going to be the case. It might be, but probably <coughs> not. So you replace the b3 now with the earlier, the 4b3? Because they just kind of run the constant, right? From above. Well, you still have, so let's compute the derivatives here. So we got 2b3x to the first plus b4. There is no b5 anymore, because the derivative of that is 0, plus b6e to the x. So that's why, look at that single prime, that's double prime. yp double prime is 2b3 plus b6e to the x. So I will rewrite the ODE right here, so we can uh, plug it in without scrolling up a bunch. So we had y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y equals 4x squared plus 6e to the x. This is going to get pretty ugly before we figure out these constants. Do you remember matching coefficients from Calc 2? <coughs> Partial fractions? From Calc 1? Calc 2. So we're going to basically match coefficients is where we're going. So we're going to reorganize terms so that uh, there should be an x to the uh, constant term, an x term, an x squared term, and an e to the x term total. And we'll be matching coefficients on those terms. All right, so plugging this in, double prime goes in first to b3 plus b6e to the x plus 4 yp prime. 2b3x plus b4 plus b6e to the x plus 4 regular y, which is b3x squared plus b4x plus b5 
close. B6, here the x equals 4x squared. E to the X. All right, no problem. Okay. And what we did was not that tricky. You're just plugging it back in. It's ugly, but not difficult. All right, I want to combine terms. So we'll distribute first, and then let's collect all our polynomial terms in front <coughs> in order, and then we'll put the exponential terms second. I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit as I go. 2b3 plus b6e to the x. You can also use letters instead of b1, b2, b3, b4. You can go capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D, capital E, like that. So whatever you want to use. Don't use lowercase e because little e shows up. You know, like the natural base will show up a whole bunch. So don't ever use little e as one of your variables. So I have plus 8b3x plus 4b4 plus 4b6e to the x. <coughs> plus 4b3x squared plus 4b4x plus 4b5 plus 4b6 e to the x so I'm going to group all the polynomial terms first and I'm going for the x squared the highest power first and now we'll go first power of x and I'm reading left to right so I see 8 b3 plus 4b4 and I think that's it for x's plus now my constants 2b3 plus 4b4 plus 4b5 So those are my constant terms, and now everything with an e to the x, I see it three times. So we got b6 plus 4b6 plus 4b6 and these are all times e to the x. So, any algebra questions on the steps? Now, you'll see the motivation of why I grouped up like this. What we're going to do is match coefficients. So, I'm going to start underlining. Yeah, so what I just underlined in blue, that'll be our first coefficient. So, if these are equal, they're supposed to be equal for all x values, not just when x is 0 or some other random value. They're supposed to work for all x values. So, yeah, they need to. Uh, so it's not just supposed to work when x is 0 or something like this. Uh, so right away, I can see 4b3 <coughs> equals 4. So that's what I just underlined right there. go for the next power of x so uh oh what I just underlined there's no x on the right side how many x's are on the right side of this equation zero so I'll use this pencil right here Whoa.
And there's also no constants, so what constant do I have on the right side? Got another zero. So any terms that are missing means you have them, you just have zero of them. So you still need to match those up. All right, so now ready to underline that 8B3 plus 4B4 equals zero. And next up, I'll do a double underline. So I'm matching the constants. 2B3 plus 4B4 plus 4B5 equals zero. And now last, I'm matching the EX coefficients. So we got 9B6 it looks like. 9B6 equals 6. <coughs> How would you describe all four of these equations at one time? So what? So what type? So it's a system of linear. So we got linear system, four equations, four unknowns. I think this is probably easy enough. You don't need a matrix. Sometimes you need one. Sometimes you don't. So I can already tell B three and B six without really doing any work. Once you know B3 and B6, you should be able to get that second equation will give you B4 right away, and then you should be able to get all, everything else, the last term out of the third equation. All right, so solve these right now. Just use substitution, elimination, whatever you want to use. Don't use a matrix, though. You still multiply, like, A, B3, B4 times A. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just start plugging in the value. You find B3 and B6 first and then work on equation two. values in order. They're 1, negative 2, 3 halves, 2 thirds. So any questions on those numbers right there? So assuming we didn't make a mistake, what we just did was pick the coefficients that turn our yp, somewhere in here, our yp is now the solution to our ODE. And it really depended on the qx function on the right side. So, ready to write out yp properly. <coughs> There's so much on the screen. Oh my goodness. So we got b3x squared. So that's 1x squared. b4 plus so minus 2x. Constant is b5. 
E6, what is that, two thirds is my E to the X coefficient. No, yes. Yeah, it's E to the X coefficient. All right, so this is YP right here. Any questions on what we did lining this up? You can take two derivatives, plug it in and check, but unless we made a mistake, that's exactly how we got the numbers in front. So unless we made a mistake, we should be okay. Now, if there's not <coughs> 10 people all doing the same problem at the same time, you probably want to check that it actually works if you have any extra time. So <coughs> to get the overall solution, all we do is add together YC and YP. So that's how we get the overall solution. You get the homogeneous plus non homogeneous. So our YC <coughs> B1 e to negative 2x plus B2 x e negative 2x plus all this YP on the screen already. Yeah, this is the solution to the non-homogeneous. So, so the first part is the homogeneous solution. The second part is the non-homogeneous solution. Yeah, so you add the <laughs> homogeneous and the non-homogeneous together to get the general solution. Go fast. <laughs> Don't talk while you're working on these. None of the steps I did are difficult. In differential equations, the difficult thing is knowing what to do next. That's the hard part. Every step we take, I don't think any step I took up here is that difficult. But what do I do next is the difficult part. So that's what your cheat sheet really needs to have written in it. Is okay, if I have a non-homogeneous uh, constant coefficient linear ODE, <coughs> this is what the form will look like right here. And then you need to know, you know, first solve for the homogeneous. So, put some things. I would include this right here. That would be like the starting point. That would be first step. Now examine QX. The second step is determining which case you have right here. So case one, case two. And then depending on what case you're in, you need to know what you should be doing in case one. So this is where it tells you YP is a linear combo of all the terms and their derivatives. Now, in the implicit in there is you also have to find the constants the way that we just did it. So if you write out full instructions, you'll probably take <coughs> up half a page. So unfortunately, you won't be able to write out full instructions for every single problem. So that's why you have to write enough instructions and have enough practice that between what you know and what's on your cheat sheet, you can figure out what to do next. That's the really tricky part in differential equations. All the steps we take, nothing's more difficult really than calc two problems, even. This is mostly easy stuff in Calc 2. It's when you put everything together that it gets really tricky. So we're going to get into case two now. <laughs> so case two is basically not case one. So what that means is there is at least one term in QX which is the same as a term in the homogeneous solution. So that's case two.
So case two, one or more derivatives of terms in Qx is slash r say this are linearly dependent with a term or terms in YC which is the homogeneous solution all right, so if you basically see a repeat as you're taking derivatives, what you're gonna do is multiply that repeat by x to the n, where n is the lowest integer that makes it independent. Most of the time it's gonna be x to the first power, occasionally it might be x squared, on a really rare problem it might be x cubed. But you want to multiply it by x to the 15th, because that means you would have, there would be 14 other terms in front of it. So it usually won't be that high power. So you're gonna multiply <coughs> the dependent terms by x to the n, where n is the smallest positive integer that gives linear independence. We actually already did case one in the homogeneous solution we just got. So, or sorry, we did case two in the homogeneous solution and I'll circle exactly where that happened. That extra X that we just brought in right there. That was x to the first power. I'll scroll back in a second. But I just wanted to show you, we've already done this before. So it happened right here. And we did a problem in the previous section that we did the exact same thing. So it's the same idea. <coughs> so we got two example problems lined up. started on them. So we have y double prime minus 3y minus 3y prime plus 2y equals 2x squared <coughs> plus 3e to the 2x. What is always step one for these higher order linear ODEs? Yep, y equals e to the mx and find m. How many m values should we get? Two. There might be repeats, maybe not. Hopefully not complex, but you know what to do if they are. <coughs> Once you have your YC, find derivatives of Q and see if you can follow along with case two. And these derivatives will be very similar. To the QX derivatives will be really similar to our last problem that we did.
so you should get 1 and 2. And so you got B1 e to the x plus B2 e to the 2x. So I'm going to take some derivatives of Q. So like 4x plus 6 e to the 2x. 4 plus 12 e to the 2x. And 24 e to the 2x. All right, how many independent terms that I get out of Q and derivatives. I can absolutely keep going and get Q triple, uh, quadruple prime, but will I produce independent terms if I keep going? So I'll just basically get a different constant multiple, but those are going to be dependent. So I could have stopped at Q double prime, I just went one further, just, I don't know, for fun showing off my derivative skills. Yeah. You're very impressed, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, so I'm just putting a box around the independent terms. So I'm not boxing the repeats, basically. <coughs> yeah, I think it's a reasonable idea. Yeah. Got a yellow highlighter, you can even match me. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. So our particular, I already used B1, B2. So we got, actually let's go capital A, B, C, D. I think that'll be faster to write. It doesn't matter what letters you use because you're about to take them out. You absolutely should not be using X and Y. Those are really horrible letters for coefficients because they're heavily in use. P is another bad one. What did I do wrong? It's kind of tricky. I did write a linear combination of everything I put a box around. Uh, let's go. Three. Let's go back. That's so right. There's so I have. Uh, let's go. So what I just circled those are dependent terms right there. So I need linearly independent terms. So what I do, I multiply <coughs> this term by x. I'm multiplying it by x to the n where n is the smallest power to make it independent. So actually the first works here. So this Yes. So it's it's the next power of x that would give you independence, yeah. All right. This is going to be more annoying for derivatives because I have a power rule. So this will be sig not that much harder, but it's going to be a little uglier as we get, you know, yp prime with yp double prime. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is write the answer out. I'm going to put three dots, which means you do this for homework. This is an important skill. So you should get seven halves. I should write this in order. So you should get x squared plus three x. I don't know why that seven's not erasing. Plus seven halves. plus 3xe to the 2x. All right, so for your homework, make sure you get the <coughs> a equals 1, b equals 3, c equals 7 halves, and d equals 3. So you should be able to recover those four constants. You got to take some derivatives, plug back in, and then you have four linear system, four unknowns, find all four. That's quite a bit more work, probably 20, 30 minutes more work.